Ali with Chaos Monkey and I just wanted to do another video. I was kind of trying to wait for it to get sunny but every time there was a sunny day I had to do other things. <laughs> so every time I wanted to film it was cloudy. So it's cloudy today but it's not too bad. Um, but the lighting might be a little bit off. So um, I just kind of wanted to go over current projects I was working on and things I finished. Um, you know just to kind of update you guys. Because I didn't have any haul videos, I didn't have anything like that currently. So one of my first projects that I'm currently working on that is taking way too long, and it's because of me, not because of the pattern, it's uh, for the doll Joya by Caro Created. And um, this is the first doll pattern that I'm making from her. So usually with the first pattern, I'm usually a little slower, and I'm usually trying to try out their techniques and things that they want you to do which might be a little different than I'm used to and also I just kinda have to be in the mood to do amigurumi or slash doll making um, technically I think amigurumi means the really tiny animals but we kind of um, use that phrase interchangeably now for just like any type of um, crocheted animal crocheted doll type of thing um, but this one's at a worsted weight, and if you can see her, she's got a lot of clothing, she's got a lot of details. And what I've done so far, keep in mind too that the pattern is written in a DK, so her pattern is smaller, and my pattern is a worsted, so my doll's going to be bigger than hers. So what I did so far was I did the feet, and her legs up to her uh, undergarments. And these actually are, you flip them down, so you can actually put her boots up if you wanted, and they look kind of like Uggs, in my opinion. And I know the lighting's bad, and we can get this out of the way too, well, especially the dark colors, but you can see that I had to do quite a bit to do the foot, stuff the foot, um, work up from the leg, and then you kind of have all this yarn kind of on holders as you're working one to the other. And then she put um, cardboard in the base of the foot so that it will stand. And as you can see, these feet stand. Um, but uh, I did plastic canvas. So I bought some little rounds of the plastic canvas at like Hobby Lobby like months ago. And I just trimmed down the plastic canvas and used two sheets of it because it was pretty thin and sewed it together. And then put it in the base so that um, if she ever has to be washed or anything like that, then the plastic canvas won't fall apart like cardboard. Um, but usually, I mean, with dolls like this, you usually just spot treat. You're not going to completely submerge anyway. But also, cardboard tends to bend over time and get um, floppy, so I just I prefer the plastic canvas. So that is her legs and feet. Here's her body, and it looks kind of like a bowling pin. This is her neck. And then here's her head. Oh, I still have strings attached, so. And the head will actually go into the, which I like this design because uh, once I move some of the stuffing out of the way and get this in there, that's going to be really supporty once it's all sewed in place because of that extra neck piece. So I like that a lot because that's usually one of the problems with dolls and animals is they get floppy over time and the heads flop or the heavy parts flop. So, But anyways, you can see the legs go like this to the body and they're going to be um, kind of like with a thread run through so that she's got bendiness and mobility. Kind of like how I did my bear. Um, if you see that video um, where I attached it with just a yarn going back and forth. I think in her pattern she wants dental floss or things like that so I'll try that out. I'm afraid the body might be too small compared to the legs, even though everything's the same gauge. So as I put her together, I'll see what's going on. I might have to adjust. I might have to rip the legs back um, to make them shorter. Who knows? But um, now I'm kind of moving on to the arms. I'm going to see how the arms look. Because if you look at her, she's pretty much all feet, legs, and arms. And then, uh, so the body might just be fine the way it is. But I'm just doing all this in I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. Um, there you go. So light peach, and these don't have labels, so I think this one is denim. 
and then I have no idea what this tan is. And the white is like an off-white. Um, I think it might be ivory. Not sure. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'd say, what, 50% maybe? But she's got a lot of clothes. So the nice thing about this one is you can use scraps for the clothing and use, like, nicer yarn scraps. So I have some leftover alpaca and stuff that I might do her little cowl with because she's got a dress, a sweater with a hoodie, a cowl, leg, um, like, leg warmer things, and a hat with pom-poms. So use up a lot of your scraps for that. So I kind of work on it in bursts and then put it away for like weeks. Let's see what else am I currently working on. I am currently working on... I would tell you where these bags are from but I honestly don't remember. If I do remember where I got the bag I'll let you know. But this is just kind of like my Halloween bags. Let's see that one just has that print on it. But um... This was actually in hibernation, so I guess technically I haven't started working on it again, but this was from a craftsy class um, with some color work hat, but since it was in hibernation since last year, I pulled it out. But um, who was it from? Donna Draconis, and I can't remember the craftsy class. It was a color work class. And anyway, this is, this is the hat, and it's got some uh, caribous or reindeers on it. And I kept ripping it back. I kept messing up my count. I was getting the pattern wrong. And I don't know why. I was just having issues. It happens. If you put it away and work on it later, then you don't have any issues. It's just like sometimes you just got to put stuff away. And then there's a couple of mitts that go with it that I also want to make. Um, the mittens have the caribou on them too, but they both face the same direction. They both go like to the right, so I'm going to have to flip one because I want my mitts to be mirrored, but I'll figure that out later, but, so I probably shouldn't even show you this one, I'm not even working on it technically, but I guess I'm planning on working on that one, so if we do future projects, then I'll go ahead and show the other one I'm planning on starting, which is the Dania Cardigan by Amber Allison. I've had this pattern forever, and I have... Cascade 220 in stash, and I wanted to do the body in like this really dark gray. It's actually black, like a heathered black. And then I have gray left over from another sweater I just did, and then those two balls from Hobium. Um, I wanted to do in a hat. Two of the balls I had like red, gray, and blue. I'm going to use the red and the gray in the sweater instead because you only need a small amount for these pieces. So my colors are going to be different, but um, that's kind of where I'm thinking right now because I'm in a sweater mood. And I just finished a sweater and I'll show it to you guys. And let me put this away. Oh, and this bag I do know. This bag is huge and it's by Bags by Awesome Granny. So, if you want, she's on Etsy. Alright, so what am I actually working on? Um, great, my cat is destroying everything on my table. Stop. You do not need to be in there, buddy. And again, I don't know who made this bag. It wasn't actually made that well, if you can see here. The zipper's coming out. I don't know if you can see that. You better be focusing. If it's not focusing this whole video, I'm going to be very sad. But anyway, you can see that the zipper... Yeah. So even if I remembered who made it, I wouldn't suggest this person. But this was my Mary Maxim kit for the color work um, that I did a video on earlier when I unboxed the kit. No lit cattail. So I actually did the whole hat all the way down to the decreases. And um, it was huge. It was way big because I had forgotten to check my needle size. And I had grabbed a needle that I thought was a smaller needle. And I have a couple that look exactly the same. And didn't check it. 
so this hat ended up being huge, and it was a huge slouchy, and it was too big for even my big head mannequin. And I took pictures, I'll put those in so you can see how big it was, it was ridiculous. I had to rip it all back, because I would have run out of yarn, and it wouldn't have fit anybody. So I got this far, remaking the hat, and then I kind of lost the will, because <laughs> I'd already made the entire hat. But that's okay, because my color work kind of was not that great, so it was. it's good to kind of pull it back and start over. And I'm reaching, um, this is a Halloween bag by Freckled Whimsy, and she does really good work. I would definitely recommend her. So if you guys go, she's also, at least she used to have an Etsy shop. Remember all my bags I bought years ago when I had money, um, when I was still working, and I don't know if, if that's still gonna, <laughs> if she's still around. Some of these people may not even be around anymore. But this was the Hobium sock yarn. And all I did was split it up into two balls and start some socks for my boyfriend. And you can see it's like a fair aisle. And I think these stripes aren't supposed to be quite this wide, but I don't use a lot of stitches in my socks. I only do 60 around because we like a lot of negative ease. And on the back you can see I do a ribbed bottom because my boyfriend likes the extra cushion. And I'm almost to the heel and I do a fish lips kiss heel in uh, garter so it has extra cushion, and I'll show you guys when I finish them, but um, I did increase four stitches towards the ankle, but you can see um, it's kind of a weird consistency since I haven't used it before. I wanted it to have negative ease, but I didn't want it to overstretch, and it was a weird, weird balance, so I'll see how they turn out when they're actually on his feet. Um, but working on those, and the kitten needs to let go. Of my yarn, thank you. What else am I working on? Excuse the reaching. Um, oh, I showed you guys this one already. I'm supposed to be throwing them on the floor so I can keep track. Uh, oh, here's my Jimmy Bean project. I also did a video on this too, if you guys want to look. And I put my little pin here. But I did the first part of the hat, if you guys want to see it. And here it is. And it only took me like an hour because it was really fun. And so there it is. I'm just waiting for my second month, because like I said, it's three months worth, um, to do the next section. So the first month was the ribbing and then the... What the heck? Get off my yarn. He eats yarn. I am so unlucky with this baby. He will actually eat it. My first cat, he doesn't even care, he's cool, but the baby will literally eat it. You will have to pull it out of his mouth. Uh, okay, so for finished objects, I think I can still film. I did clear off a little memory, but it might cut me off. Is I finished this sweater, and this was graphite, the pattern, in Cascade 220. And the 220, I, they just have numbers, and it was just, it's like a charcoal dark gray. And you're not going to be able to see this, so I will put in pictures, but um, I finished. There's the collar, the neck, raglan, and then the body. So it's just a pullover with a cool texture and a ribbing. So I finished that, and I'm really happy because I got some yarn out of stash, and it fits really nice. I normally, oh, I'll show you the waist shaping. She did really nice waist shaping. So here's where the arm is. So you can see it comes in. You come in and then you go out for the hip on the shaping. And so it looks very flattering. Um, and then I did finish this out of one of the balls of the yarn from um, Hobium. And it was the jersey. And I remember how it had the speckles of the darker color into the lighter color. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to look bad. Well, on this ball it didn't, because you can see there's purple into the blue, and there's purple into the pinks, where it's splattered in there, not intentionally for them, and you can see it actually in the uh, tassels. You can definitely see it's, it's, it's just because sometimes that happens during manufacturing. And what this is is a wide-necked bandana cowl from Bag of Day Crochet. She has an Etsy channel where she does free patterns.
it kind of bothers me on the fringe just a tiny bit, like here, because it really sticks out. I kind of did the fringe just random um, with the colors, but overall I still think it looks good. And I didn't pick, you know, I didn't, uh, I just worked the ball. I didn't cut it or anything, and I just happened to end up with a pink on the edge here, and I really like that. So that was another finish. Um, I don't think I have any other finishes. Sometimes I finish stuff and forget, but I don't think so. But then I wanted to show you guys, um, I got the Mary Maxim jewelry kit. I'm not doing a separate video on this because it's kind of not worth it. <laughs> but I ordered it for the month of October. And I think they ran out of the one because it wasn't what they had pictured. And it's usually kind of the current month they have pictured. I think they ran out because this is what I got. Um, I don't think this is what everybody else got. So I think they just kind of had to do whatever they had to do because they ran out. So I wasn't really impressed. The first month is like $6.99 and then after that it's like 11 after shipping and then future months. So it's a pretty... Oops, I'm losing pieces. I didn't open any of these. These are just... Um, there's a whole bunch of jump rings and stuff down here. You can see just in the bag that fell out from somewhere. But, um, like I said, I think they ran out of the main one and just kind of grabbed whatever they had to send out. Um, so I'm kind of disappointed. I didn't want to do a big video on it. Um, I have made jewelry in the past, so I was kind of interested in making some more jewelry. Um, but here's what all the pieces are supposed to look like when they're put together. So it's basically just attaching the charm to the chain and the bracelet to the hardware bracelet piece um, with the lobster claws and some rings um, and the chain, this chain piece you have to attach. So it's pretty basic. Um, Anyway, I mean, I'm disappointed, but I think they kind of had to do what they had to do to make it work this month. So I'm going to give them another month and see what next month looks like. I'm not going to hold against them uh, for this month. So I just kind of wanted to show that. That I don't think other people got this for October. I'll rewatch the videos for the jewelry kit. But I think, like I said, I think they ran out. And they just kind of had to do what they had to do. Um, but hopefully next month I'll get the better, more planned. Ooh! Um... And then also, I just wanted to show you guys, I, um, I go to the library a lot, and I got this book from the library, Edward's Crochet Imaginarium, and I thought it was adorable. And basically it's about making monsters, but I love this flippy part. You can flip this and pick the body parts. So I thought that was just so cute. I just wanted to share it real quick. So you can pick your head, pick your arms and then pick your feet. So you just kind of flip through, pick what you want, and then the directions are on this side, which I don't want to show, um, to make the animal. And she has, because um, I believe it's written by a woman, it's called Edwards, but it's written by Carrie Lord, but Carrie could be a boy name too. So, but um, then she goes into, or he, she or he goes into construction, all in the back, color picking, um, materials you need, sizing, and that's basically it's just saying um, if you're going to make an animal, you're going to make an amigurumi, the, more, the larger yarn you use, the larger the animal. You don't have to modify the pattern. So here's just showing um, the smallest, thinnest yarns up to the biggest, bulky yarns. So just for a heads up if you didn't know that. And then there's a whole section on tails if you want to add some tails. So I just thought that was really cute. And I like to do all my knitting books from the library first um, because then I can know if I really like it because I've bought books before where I really thought I'd like them and they only like one pattern and it's a complete waste of money. So I get them from the library first and then I'll buy them later if I really, really want them. And then she has some pre... He or she has some pre-put-together monsters if you want to mimic that one. And I just thought it was really cute. I won't go on too, too long, but um, I really like this guy. 
I'm going to make this guy. Because my lighting, like I said, my lighting is really crap today. Um, and then the stitches, I mean, it's a really nice book. It's well put together. It's got picture, it's got really nice pictures. It's got everything you could need to put the animal together. And then on top of that, it's got this really cool concept of just, you know, what kind of arms do I want? What kind of feet do I want? And then there's a selection of like five different tails. Um, so if you guys have never heard of this book, it's really awesome. And if you're interested in making little monsters, I don't know if I'll make anything out of it. Um, I'll probably make at least one thing out of it. But again, it's a library book, so I only have so much time before I have to return it. Um, and then the other book I got was um, Crochet Style for Baby and Kids. And I've noticed a lot of these books are using the same kind of style and the way they lay them out. Um, it's really nice photography. So if you want some more stylish, trendy, more modern baby items, um, this one's got those in there. Again, I don't know if I'll make anything out of this one, but just to give you a heads up, it's a really nice book. And they've got everything, blankets, booties, car seat covers, bonnets, stuffies, um, some really cute hats. Some sleep sacks. You guys can see that one. I know there's a glare because I have to use overhead, but overhead light. <laughs> but there's, I mean, a really cute stuff in here. And there's some really cute hats in the back. And look, there's one to match your 18 inch doll. I was thinking about making some 18 inch doll clothes, but I wouldn't have anybody to give them to. I would maybe sell them if I did bother to make any just for funsies. But I really like a lot of the hats back here. The cable, crochet cabling is really in, so people are really doing a lot of different um, cable work hats. And of course crochet is so much faster than knitting. So it's nice just to crank out a hat or two with some pretty cables. So yeah, those, I just shared that. There's a couple books I got. I think that's it. I'm really not working on very much right now. I usually have a lot more in rotation. Um, so anyway, you guys, uh, if I think of anything, I'll add it on. And I'll put pictures in because I know my setup isn't the best for showing big items. Hoping to change my setup eventually, but um, this is what I got. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.